when Keep launched, we had a very simple hypothesis in our head. Do people like free stuff? And will they redeem in this method of achievement-based rewards? Keep as a rewards network is a very simple model. You have brands that have rewards that go through the Keep network into your games and your achievement moments. Where Keep changes things and brings an additional opportunity to developers is we're allowing them to capitalize on a new type of inventory that isn't tied to screen real estate. Screen estate has always really been a fixed concept for the mobile advertising space. But we realize that your game is much more than just screen estate. There's also moments and achievements that matter. And so for us, we wanted to take this moment and make it worth something. Hello, hello. Okay, so our next speaker is Courtney uh, Gurton. Um, I'm going to ask him to come up. Basically, you've seen a little bit. in the video about uh, what his company does, but I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about Courtney himself. Um, the company, he's the CTO of Keep, which as you see, is, as you saw, is a rewards network. They've raised more than $16 million in the United States, um, so they have a bit of cash, and that means that they're probably doing something well because they've been able to convince quite a few investors um, to take a big bet on them. His business partner, Brian Wong, that you guys saw in the video, is a teen, or he was a teenage entrepreneur, that raised, uh, helped to raise $300,000 for the company when he was still just 19, becoming the youngest ever founder to receive venture investments. Um, and they met while they were working at Dig, which I think most of us know about, which is a social news website that's raised over more than $45 million in the United States from some of Silicon Valley's leading investors like Mark Andreessen, Ron Conway, and Greylock Partners. So with that, I'll pass it to Courtney. All right. Thanks so much for having me. It's my first time to Spain. It's uh, been pretty an amazing couple days, and uh, very honored to be here and talk to you today. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about the power of engagement in emotion and gaming. And there's a lot here. Uh, first, though, there we go. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Courtney Gurton. I'm from San Francisco, California. Originally from Minnesota. Um, that's my Twitter name, pretty much everywhere online, GitHub, etc. You can find me there. Uh, I like to create things. Um, I've always been a creator. I've always been fascinated by science and technology in the future. My entire teenage years was pretty much reading popular science in the wired. It's probably one of the main reasons I'm an engineer today. I get an incredible feeling from creating something out of nothing. Like much of you with a game, you have an idea. This is a clean slate. You start putting some pieces together. You get the sense of achievement as uh, you know, bits are moving across the screen and you know, you're able to, to, to kill an enemy or things like that. It's uh, definitely an adventure. Some of the things that I've worked on, uh, again, he mentioned Dig. I uh, worked there. It's when I moved out to California. Um, created the 8-bit avatar thing. I don't know if you used Twitter last year. It was kind of popular there. Um, it was a lot of fun. I loved fashion and style and curation. Did a project called Follow Style. But I was, uh, I've always been interested in games and uh, decided to create my own game with a good friend of mine. Um, made a simple puzzle game for the iOS. It was just nice to learn that platform. It's called 7x7. Seven Seven. You can check it out. On, it's free to download. It's available now. And now I uh, work with an amazing team at Keep. And what is Keep? You know, as you heard briefly, we are a rewards network. And what we do is we enable brands to give out real rewards to people who are hitting achievements. These achievements can be in games. Um, these achievements can be in fitness apps, different things like that. We work with a lot of mobile developers. Uh, I wanted to quickly just go over some of the gaming trends. Uh, I think this is important to have kind of a high-level understanding of where gaming is today. Um, one, continued growth and adoption. It's uh, pretty much now, if with a lot of mobile devices, everyone's a gamer. You don't need a PlayStation. You don't need Xbox. You know, everyone with a mobile device, you see it everywhere, right? See it on uh, subway. You see it on the plane. I can't tell you how many people when I flew over here had iPads or Android phones, and everyone was playing games, young, old, male, female. Everyone's a gamer now. You might not consider yourself one. You might not call yourself one, but you're probably playing a game. Uh, gaming industry is one of the fastest growing industries in media entertainment. You know, from just uh, $10 billion in 1999 to uh, an estimated over $65 billion last year, and it's just increasing. 
We spend over three billion hours a week playing games. You know, that's an insane amount of time. It's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, it, the, the users are heavily engaged. And you know, we have this concept of you know, prime time TV. Well, that's really, that concept's sort of gone. You know, it's like games are almost the new prime time TV now. And the hit shows are like Angry Birds or Cut the Rope, things like that. Uh, games have always been social, whether it be football or playing dice with friends or card games. And the same true, it seems true now, right? We have Game Center. It's a social ecosystem. There's 130 million accounts. Five billion scores are posted per week. Majority of the top games have some integration with Game Center. And making it one of the largest social networks in the world. You know, it's not really talked about as much as being the big social network, but it is, and it's all based around gaming. Uh, this leads to in just incredible adoption rates, right? Draw something came out, 50 days later, 50 million downloads. That's just, it's, it's huge, right? 3,000 drawings per second at uh, its peak. They had 24, milli or, yeah, 24, uh, daily act 24 million daily active users. Well over a billion, it's probably like two, three billion drawings now. It's just been a massive amount of people playing one particular game. Second big thing is mobile. Uh, obviously everything's going to mobile and um, it's the traffic for mobile is continuing to go fast. It's about 10% of internet traffic now, which is uh, just incredible. One of the main reasons, obviously, uh, it's actually surpassing some web, right, your desktop. We're behind our desks a lot during the day, but uh, we actually have our devices with us um, in more places, so it's actually surpassing uh, web consumption. And the main reason is because we can bring it everywhere, right? You know, we're at home in our beds, we're you know, in the restroom, we're just taking a break in line, or waiting for a movie. Um, we play a game, uh, check email, do whatever, post a photo to Instagram, do it any time. Um, there's a lot of money in mobile, obviously, which is why more people are gravitating towards it. Just uh, the first six months here has been $6.5 billion in mobile exits, um, Instagram being one of them for about a billion dollars. It's changing the, the ecosystem of companies. Um, you know, here's just some of these are a couple years ago, like Disney and Playdom and stuff, but, you know, Zynga recently bought OMG Pop. You know, they tried to give Rovio $2 billion and they're like, no way. Um, that's just an insane amount of money. Gree with Open Fate and Funzio, and Gree's launching this new platform. Um, Apple even buying companies. They bought Shop for Discovery. Um, Discovery's really, really important when it comes to gaming. Uh, EA, PopCap, Crowdstar, very famous and very popular company for web games. They're just going mobile only. So they're no longer going to be supporting, or well they'll probably support, but they're no longer going to put resources into making web games anymore. They're going to do all mobile. But uh, it's not all like, yay, rocket ships and, uh, and, and money everywhere. There's, uh, there's a lot of ups and downs in gaming, right? And we're seeing that actually today. Uh, draw something. You know, I just got done saying how crazy growth is. but it's also growth is diving off fast. Um, it's hard to keep users around. Some people get bored. Things change, right? So they're, they're on a fast decline. It went from about 20 plus million uh, DAU to I think right around 5 million now. Zynga, this is, this is incredible, right? They've lost 67% um, in the last 90 days. That's a lot of money. That's billions of dollars gone. And some of the concerns are if the Facebook gaming platform is slowing. Uh, is it because of mobile, perhaps? Is it because they're bored of just clicking in, uh, in, in any of the Bill games? It could be. Um, so this is just, you know, some cause for alarm. But it's, it's not doom and gloom, right? Uh, I don't know if a lot of people know this. I found this pretty interesting. There actually was kind of a, a, a crash in 1983 in gaming, at, at least in North America, where uh, revenues were about $3.2 billion in 1983. And in just two years, Literally 90% of gaming stopped. No one bought games. There's a lot of reasons for this, but the, the main cause is because people were just like throwing out all these low quality games. This ended up being crap everywhere. And people lost confidence and no one bought. You know, if, if, I don't know if you recall, but then a couple of years later, Nintendo came out with their NES system and totally changed the landscape and yay, everyone, you know, uh, loves Mario Brothers. Um, uh, developers are looking to stand out, you know, discovery, re-engagement are key. You know, there's uh, hundreds of apps that are launched every day, right? This is just last month in the App Store. Um, 29,148 apps were submitted. You know, 7% of those were games. 
That's well, that's close to a thousand apps per day. You know, how do you stand out? How do you re-engage when people are downloading other apps? 134 of them are games, right? So when when you're creating a game, you're doing this. You got to figure out like, how am I going to get discovered? How am I going to have people who actually download on my game come back and play it? It's it's very very important. Uh, monetization, big changes here. Just quickly go over. We all know pay to play, premium and in-app purchases, mobile advertising, sponsorships. They all have their plus and minuses. But the big thing uh, to take away from this is that people are starting to layer these. It's not they just don't choose one anymore. They they have to you have to design your game in a way where you you take each one of these into account because uh, you, you can't just rely on, for example, uh, in-app purchases. Um, the, because mobile is blowing up, uh, obviously, and there's 10% of people on mobile, you know, internet traffic, etc. But only 1% of the advertising budgets really go to mobile. So there's a huge disparity, and and it, it's going to catch up. So there's going to be a lot more uh, mobile advertising dollars going to uh, mobile. Work and play. You know, we've seen, we've heard a little bit about this earlier today. But in the age of mobile and analytics, if it's accessible and measurable, people are going to make a game out of it, right? Uh, the work and play is really being blurred. And a few main reasons why this is happening is because it influences behavior. It does motivate us. Um, a big thing here, I don't know if this is big in the States here, uh, it's called Nike, uh, Nike Plus, and it's Nike Fit, right? It's the fuel band. I wear one. I, I love it. Um, I'm still going to run. I like to work out, but now I can measure my actions. So now every day I go, all right, did I did I hit my goal, my Nike Fuel points? Did I get 2,000 points, 3,000 points? I can compete with my friends. So I'm still people are still going to be active, right? It's not that they're only being active because of this device, but because they give it a point system, because it's measured, I can uh, it, it, it ends up becoming a game, and I mean, and, and it does influence behavior. So it resets every night at midnight, right? And if I don't hit my goal, I'm like doing jumping jacks at 11.30 p.m. in my room. I mean, it's just silly, but it's just what I do. Education's being uh, changed quite a bit, obviously. You know, you level up in class instead of just getting a midterm grade or a final grade. You can level up throughout class. Uh, there's a lot of different studies. A lot of people are experimenting this with this. Good results. Changing in the enterprise workplace. We see, you know, people implying games there. Social. It's not now that you just send out a tweet or whatever. It's how many retweets did you get? How many likes did you get? And then there's companies that give you a score. And it's, it's kind of crazy. You were like, all right, I really don't care. But now that score will get you something. Right? If you're in San Francisco and you have a good cloud score, you get uh, free access to um, the good lounges, right? Free drinks, et cetera. So it, it's, it's, it's almost like a status thing. It's like you got an achievement because you're really good at social. It, it's, it's interesting how it, uh, you, you start gamifying just your normal actions and how it changes people's behavior. Games on games, you know, you, it's no longer you just watch a game. You got to play a game about the game when you're at the game. So, you know, if uh, you Heineken came out with this app, there's a lot of other games out there that do this. You know, you, you, we do it all the time. We're like, oh, I bet she's going to miss, and then you'll miss. But now you can actually make a game out of it because it's measured. You can say, all right, I'm going to bet you 5,000 points that she's totally going to miss, and your friend will bet you, and whoever wins wins. And you know, fantasy sports is huge in America. I don't know how big it is here, but. Uh, you know, millions of people are participating, and um, it's about a three to four billion dollar economic impact every year, right? Uh, you know, lose weight, get points. It, it, it works, right? Weight Watchers is still around. The company's been around for a long time. One of the main reasons is because they give you points, right? You can track it, measure it. Uh, recycling. Hey, I want you to recycle more. Let's, you know, make a make a game out of it, and people will do it. People still recycle. They feel good doing it, but now you can get some other things. So, but there's one column, common element in all of this. Uh, it's basically every game has this element, and that's the achievement moment, right? So it's, uh, wow, this is a lot slower than, it's not supposed to just randomly slowly go in like that. But anyway, the achievement moment. Um, it's in every game. It's this moment of elation. You're just like excited, you know, hands up in the air, victory. I finally beat the boss. I did all this. It happens billions of times per uh, per day around all the world, whether it be in games, whether it be in fitness, whether it be offline, it doesn't really matter. Achievements are happening everywhere. And it's, it, is, it is a special moment. I think it's something that I, you know, I'll be talking a lot about in the rest of the talk. Oh, no. Okay, good. All right. Um, let's face it, advertising. It, it, it sucks. Everyone, 
the attention is a commodity today, right? Everyone's trying to get you to look at their, their ad or use this product, even if it is just for a second. So, you know, whether it's taking up screen real estate or um, purchase intent and search, you know, hey, you search for this, buy, buy these four things. Uh, context matching, you know, contextual ads. You're looking at a car, here's an insurance. Um, and offers and trials. But what uh, I think really matters are th these moments. Um, it's the moments that when you're, you're highly engaged at something, that's the best time to, to engage with uh, someone who, a, a customer or a potential user. Now we all have moments, right? Moments happen that are really important for us. A lot of people are graduating right now. So that, that's a moment in someone's life. Um, or like, you know, you, you're rowing, you, and your, your team won the rowing competition. Um, a simple achievement. And everyone's seen this screen, you know, whether it took you two minutes to get this or it took you four hours, it, it is an achievement. It's something you're kind of stoked on, right? There's some, some delight, you know, they show you big stars, big high score, yay. Um, and it, it, with it becomes like when you level up, there's like some status things in games, and there's also this in real life, you know, sky miles, right? I want to be platinum, you know, coach flying over here. You see everyone like lounging out on the big plane flying for 10 hours. I would like that, that would be amazing. Um, and even, you know, just, just status in terms of like how you pay for things. I have a credit card I can pay, but no, I need a special card to pay, right? I need a black card. And it's so, it's such a status symbol that people wear it as jewelry. It's crazy. So, um, you know, we at Keep, we do believe that every achievement deserves a reward. That's kind of what we stand for, and that's, that's why we're around. And because uh, with each achievement, there is this sense of accomplishment, which brings emotion. When you have emotion in it, it's, it's, uh, it makes things more important. It, um, you actually have this value exchange, right? If, I give, if, uh, if I'm able to give a reward to you at a time where you're really excited, there, there, there's, it's like a thank you, right? It's, it's, I'm not forcing you to do anything. It's, it's, it's a, a reciprocal layer, and it can be very, very powerful. Um, I mean, we, it's, it's hard to love a, an ad, but and it keep here, we actually get a lot of people, you know, thanking us. They're like, hey, thank you for this reward, right? So it's, it's easier to, to basically, you know, enjoy a reward, but it, it's hard to really enjoy an ad. And, uh, you know, social gifting and gifting like this and, and, and uh, sharing your achievements and sharing what you've accomplished is very important here. And so we have the ability to gift our rewards, right? So let's just say I get makeup, because sometimes I might not know, you know, playing a device, uh, who this person is, male, female, right? Targeting, it can be difficult on mobile. But I can gift it, right? I might give it to my uh, girlfriend or give it to my mom. Um, and uh, I can send a little message. And we kind of did a little uh, word chart of, you know, uh, all the things that are people are sharing. And love is actually the number one word. And that's what it, there's a lot of emotion there. And here's some of the uh, quotes that people are, have said. You know, it's like, hey, I love you. Here it is. I love you so much. I sent you this because you deserve it. You're awesome parents. And these people were just playing games, and they want a reward, and now they're like sharing that with their family. It's it's it is quite powerful, and they they uh, they remember that, right? And they'll email us, and they'll email the game developer saying thank you for this. So there is an emotional return on investment, so to speak. You know, um, there is uh, you are surprising the light the the user, and um, there's some social validation. So it's just being recognized, right? You you work all day. And you work really hard on a project. And if no one says, great job, you're just like, well, screw this. Why am I doing it? So, and, and the same is for like apps, and the same thing is for just regular life, right? We need social validation. And, uh, and we're here to kind of help that. Um, you know, your work has been recognized. There's memory, you, you remember things. There's this cognitive uh, reaction where like, you're going to remember that brand because they gave you something. Right? And you're not really going to remember that you saw that billboard. So, and it helps you being part of the conversation when you're being part of the moment. And uh, we kind of break things down and keep into this play framework, right? So there's this action layer where, you know, if you're always playing these games, right? And you're, you're, you're running, you're running, you're running, and you're collecting things. And let's just say you're collecting a bunch of uh, uh, boxes. And, you know, you collect ten boxes, and now that's an achievement. And for that achievement, you might get a reward. And that's sort of where we're at. We're at kind of this rewards layer. But it's serendipitous, right? And what that really means is it's, it's random. 
you don't really know when you're going to get one, but you probably will get one at some time. And that's very, very powerful. You know, it's uh, serendipity versus expectation is big. Um, if, if you're going to, you want to do something out of the sake of doing it because you enjoy it. You're playing this game because you enjoy this game. You know, you're not getting to level 10 because you want a, a Starbucks or you want a coffee. You're doing it because you want to get to level 10. But if you suddenly get a reward for that, then you feel this, you know, satisfaction. And it ends up being kind of like this gamer crack, right? It's, it's the psychological thing of where you, you're like, whoa, I got that for that. Well, what happens if I do this? And then you keep on playing and you keep, you know, you keep trying to solve more problems. Um, there's this windows of enhanced intention when you, when this, at this moment. There's this kind of a, uh, you might have heard of this study. It's talked a lot about uh, when people talk about um, serendipity and things. But uh, there's this guy named uh, Skinner. I don't know that I had to tr convert this into PowerPoint, so I apologize. But they, uh, uh, Skinner was this doctor in like 1948 in, in the Department of Psychology. He took uh, pigeons and he put one of them, uh, you know, pigeon one in a cage and they would hit a lever and that would come food. And every time they hit the lever, food would come. They took another set of pigeons and put them in a cage. And, you know, every time they hit the lever, sometimes nothing would happen. You know, hit it a couple of times, oh, food would come, right? So it's random. And then, you know, after, like, uh, doing this for a while, you know, pigeon A always getting something, pigeon B maybe two, three times, all right, there I get food. They stopped giving food. And see the behavior of each, of each pigeon. Pigeon one, after a couple times, just stopped. They're like, oh, lover's broken, food's done, I'm done. Pigeon two would continue hitting it up to the point of where it would just pass out. You know, 10,000 times. Because he doesn't know when the next one's going to come. And, and it's just this, we have this, and it's, it's ingrained in like humans, and it's ingrained in animals and everything. There's just like the psychology of serendipity. But it's not like we're just sitting there trying to, you know, make a machine out of everyone and doing all this. We're just, this emotion, there's this go beyond the ad and go, you know, in the machine, be human to someone, right? And that's just, that's one thing that we try to strive for. And advertisers must understand uh, what the, you know, user and consumer is seeking. Because everyone's different. You know, you're different in, in what you're doing right now versus, you know, what they might be doing. And technology has given us choice. You know, we interact when and where we want to. We have this mobile phone. I can watch a movie right now. I can play a game. I can call a friend. I can, you know, check on a I can do whatever. You know, we're, we're really in the, the world of do what you want when you want. Um, just some things about this being human. This is just, uh, you know, uh, I, th I thought this was pretty interesting. I was talking about the Nike Fuel Ban to a friend. He was wondering if he should get it. I was like, yeah, you should definitely get it. You know, I'm doing jumping jacks at night. And, uh, and Nike Fuel just reaches out and says, you know, hey, yeah, it, a nocturnal gym class workout, that counts, right? They're, they're, just, they're engaging with me. It makes, the, it makes this device a little bit more human. There is someone actually talking to me about it. And I thought that that was pretty powerful. This one's my, one of my favorites. This is my friend, Kristen, right? She's, uh, she's was in Beverly Hills, California, setting a hotel. She's like, tried to order grilled cheese. And she's like, no grilled cheese on the Beverly Hillshire room service menu. Other than that, I never want to leave. Well, Beverly Hillshire reached out with a reward and a thank you saying they actually gave her grilled cheese. They're like, no grilled cheese, no problem. They sent this up to her room. Didn't, you know, didn't ask for it. It was just like a nice little surprise, right? And uh, she, she'll remember this moment. She'll remember Wilshire because of this. And I even, I'm telling you now because of it, I thought it was just very cool. This is reaching out, there's some human, human interaction there. Now, I'm, I'm an engineer, and I like to build things, so I wanted to kind of just talk to you about, like, you know, building a rewards network. What is that? How do you do that? What are the things that are in place with that? So, one, uh, serendipitous in real time. You know, these, these moments are fleeting. They're, they don't last long, right? You get an achievement, it's there for a second or two, and then it's gone. So you got to be fast. You got to know when the right moment to capture them, and, uh, and it has to be highly scalable. There's millions of people are playing games. Billions of achievements are happening per day. We need to be able to track them, and, uh, and we have to be able to scale. And it has to be obviously very easy to implement. Um, and the, this is very, very important. It can never be annoying. So you know, no one wants to be annoyed. And so, and uh, just some other quick things, uh, you know, you got to support multiple platforms in this ecosystem. It's got to be easy to implement, you got to have amazing documentation, right? So translate our documents into different languages, different things like that. 
it's simple, but it's important. Um, organic behavior, you know, was one thing that we wanted uh, to be there when you're already doing something meaningful, right? So we didn't want to create our own apps. We don't want to create our own games, and we try to, you know, you would uh, you then just be playing them for the rewards. You want to be uh, using in the fitness apps that you are already doing, or the cool games and like solving cool logo things and logo, logo twists. Um, you know, be there, and we work with amazing developers to do that. These guys already have an insane amount of users happy playing their game. So we try to surprise and delight everyone. And you need to work with, you know, trust in a well-known brands. We've worked with tons of brands here, you know, whether it be Pepsi or Disney or Best Buy or Sony. And uh, you, there has to be this level of trust. And it's very, very important when there's emotion and engagement. It has to be beautiful and flexible. Design, right? The, the devices are small, big. Uh, you know, there's Android phones, lots of different sizes. And so it has to be flexible, it has to be cool, and it has to just be, people deserve um, some attention to detail. And data analytics, you know, they, they process a lot of data. You know, uh, uh, I might just suck at a particular game, right? Just, I'm awful, I only get 10,000 points, where you're awesome, you get 150,000 points every time you play. So. I'm struggling, I'm playing, and I finally I get, you know, 50,000. That's huge for me, it's a big jump. Whereas if you get 60,000, well, it's no biggie, that was easy for you. So 50,000 points for me, um, that's like, that's an achievement for me. I'm happy there, I don't get that often. So we, we do a lot of data, data analysis to figure out like when do we give the right reward to the right person at the right time. And that, that's, that's, that's the challenge, that's the goal. And it must be fun and truly engaging. Right, because who wants to do anything that's boring? So we reached out to Guinness Book of World Records, and we're like, we want to give the ultimate achievement and the ultimate reward, and that's like Guinness Book of World Records, right? You're the, you're the best at what you do. So uh, we had this big competition where we, uh, it was in the game Mega Jump, and people played over the course of a weekend around the world. And people are competing, right? And uh, they're competing on these billboards, and this is sort of what it looked like, you know, hey, you're in first place, play again, and you compete to win, and, and it was, uh, you know, made some news, it was, it was a lot of fun. But uh, the takeaways were really important. Um, you know, 145,000 people played, and the number of people that it played and submitted a score, you know, over 1,000 people played 100 times. And the average number of uh, attempts, meaning the average number of times they competed and tried to submit a score, was 22, almost 23 times over the weekend they were playing this game, you know, trying to get the highest score. Whereas the average person who wasn't participating at all was around 10, I mean, it's still a lot, right? But the people playing this competition, having fun socially with their friends, was about two and a half times more engaged. That's a huge engagement. And plus, at the end of the day, there was a winner, uh, he was in Switzerland, and he got the Guinness Book of World Records. Pretty cool reward, right? It's, it's a lot of fun. He was playing this game anyway, and just decided to spend many hours, actually, uh, the course of one evening, and uh, just dominated and, and took home the gold. So, um, there's a, there's a, the power of emotion in gaming is, is huge. It's just leveraging it in the right way. And uh, I think that it, it, the most important thing in, in, in mobile, because these devices are personal with us, is, is to treat them as such and kind of make it more human. So, thank you so much. If, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. All right. It's all good. All right. It looks, oh, we have one over there. Hi. Hey. Um, in terms of uh, rewarding, is it fair to, I mean, because you say it's like most of the times kind of a surprise, mm -hmm. so is it better to tell them before they play so that they know yeah. they're yeah, going like to they achieve get. something or just a yeah, surprise so and that's yeah, the way to communicate? I, uh, so it, it really depends. Um, we have some things that we, we call like promos where you can actually tell the user, hey, in these games, if you do X, Y, and Z, you might win. 
something. You know, you might win if your female Sephora makeup, or um, you might win an Amazon gift card or coffee, etc. So there, there is an expectation that you could win something, right? But you just don't know when. So we don't say if you do this, you will get that. That, that's something that we kind of shy away from. So you might know that there's rewards available. You just don't know exactly when you might get them. So that's sort of the takeaway. So yeah, I, I think it is important to know that this is available and, and the options there and, and, and things that could happen and they will happen, you just don't know when. So yeah, because you have to know what challenges you should take to get some, somewhere. It's not totally 100% out of the blue. But, uh, there's just not this expectation of, um, of I'm going to get it right now. And that, that's, that's what we try to shy away from. Okay. I think we have one question over here. Hi. Sorry, I feel like I'm monopolizing the uh, yeah. QA section. Yeah. Um, I see this, this is a good question for you. Uh, I want a little bit more sales pitch about your company because I use Open Paint. Okay. I have used, uh, you know, Game Center. Mm -hmm. So what is different about Keep? Because I never hear about it before. Okay, so yeah, well actually we, we work really well on top of. So a lot of gamers, they, they use Open Faint or, or Game Center, and they've already defined all your achievements, right? You know what works best within your achievements. So what we do is our SDK is we're, we go right on top of that. So we don't displace any of that. We work along well with that. So as your person hits an achievement and that would be posting to Game Center, they then might get a reward for that achievement. So we work in conjunction with, not, not against. So if, as, and that's the, that's the big thing. You know, game developers know their games. You know your games. You know what, what, uh, what achievements you want to give. You know the flow at which you want to give them. And we just will reward that person at that experience. So you're already making them happy with uh, you know, the shiny little object and maybe a tool you unlocked because they got that. And we're just bringing like a, a real life element into it as a, as a nice thank you. So that, that's where it comes in. And we actually have an open faint import. Like you can just import all your achievements in. So it just makes it very simple. Okay, well at this point I'm gonna take advantage and call um, Mark and Josh back to the stage uh, because the organizers of Moon 2012 actually want to give you a little symbolic uh, gift. You have to take it now. So apparently they tell me this is a back tradition or something really important to show uh, that you're a winner. And since we're all supposedly Yay. winners, <laughs> we're gonna everyone's a winner. Yeah. Is it a hat? Yeah, it's a hat. And you actually have to take a picture. All right. Thank you. You can wear it. No, rock this all the time. <laughs> so take the. It's called the chapella. Do you put your hair out or in? The front part. You can take that. No, no, no. No. Let me. Let me. I'm getting. Uh, <laughs> Can you wait? Does this common? Does everyone rock these? Everyone have like four of these? In every color. In every color, yeah. This is the Baba hat. <laughs> 